Since its discovery in the early 80s, HIV has infected more than 60 million people and killed around half of them. So obviously since the very beginning, people have been trying to design an efficient vaccine against HIV. In doing this, they have followed two approaches. These are also the two approaches that made it into clinical trials. The first approach was based on the idea of inducing protective antibodies against the surface protein of HIV. The second approach was more based on a cellular response against other HIV proteins. We now know that both approaches failed so far, so obviously there is a need to understand more about the interaction between HIV and the human immune system. We decided to follow a new approach and look into the B-cell response of patients whose antibodies naturally neutralize a broad range of different HIV isolates. So we started off with designing a technique to isolate HIV-specific B cells in infected patients. And after we've isolated these B cells, we reproduce the antibodies that they, that they make. Reproduce these antibodies and then found out which part on the HIV surface they bind to. The surprising result of that mapping was that antibodies do not bind to one immunodominant region on the HIV surface. Much more, they are directed to several different parts on the HIV surface. After we've tested where they bind to, we then proceeded and investigated the neutralizing activity of, of these antibodies. And the result of that was also very surprising because it showed that killing different viral strains is not achieved by one antibody, but much more by the group, the pool of different antibodies. And in a vaccine, that is especially important because you need to induce these antibodies and this protection against a broad diversity of different strains that are out there.